Before you welcome an apprentice to your company, it is essential that you as a mentor know what are the rules and regulations around your apprenticeship. This can relate to national legal requirements or to a formal agreement between you, your company and the education center, but also to a contract your company can have directly with the student apprentice. Although there are variations between countries and education centers, overall, the objectives of an apprenticeship are pretty much the same. Basically, the main objective of an apprenticeship is to provide the student with the opportunity for on-the-job training. This means an active participation in productive situations related to the job they are learning for. It means that the apprentice should be stimulated to put into practice the knowledge, skills and attitudes they have acquired during their education. The period they spend in your company should specifically favor the acquisition of skills that they haven't necessarily been able to learn at school, as these are only addressed in practice. It goes without saying that the work the apprentice is doing should be meaningful for the apprentice, but of course it should be of benefit to your company as well, providing you with a useful extra pair of hands and future technicians. Ideally, apprentices should be fully integrated into the workplace, doing work they are being educated and trained for, and which, with the necessary guidance and support, should be challenging, meaningful, and promoting their professional development. In order to make this successfully possible for an apprentice, it's therefore essential that there is a clear framework and agreement between the company and the education center on how this should be organized. This agreement should build on the specific areas of knowledge and expertise both your company and the education center have, and clarify how you will together coordinate the apprentice's training. Every apprentice will also have a supervisor assigned by the education center to follow up their work and this person should be your key point of contact and information. To be able to prepare optimally for an apprentice who you are going to mentor, it's important that you familiarize yourself with a number of key rules, regulations and agreements with the education center. These include the legally established dates for carrying out the work placement, the minimum and maximum hours per day and per week the apprentice is expected to work, and the minimum and maximum total hours the apprenticeship should last. There should also be clarity about the minimum attendance of the apprentice at your company, and you should be aware of the regulations regarding absences. It's also important to be aware of possible exceptions that could be in place for apprentices, which can be different from the regular employees in your company. This could, for example, relate to specific work shifts, night work, working during weekends, doing dangerous jobs, etc. Furthermore, it is important that you know about legal aspects related to health and safety regarding apprenticeships in a company, especially as these might be different than for regular employees. When it comes to the apprenticeship agreement that needs to be signed between your company and the education center, there are several aspects that are generally applicable. As a mentor, you should be aware of these and able to communicate and explain it clearly to your apprentice. An important characteristic of an apprenticeship is that even when they are in your company, the apprentice remains a student at the education center. In other words, there is no direct employment relationship with your company. This also means, for example, that any eventuality or accident that may occur will be considered in terms of the education center's insurance. The agreement between your company and the education center should clarify any additional issues related to the apprenticeship, which might be general or specific to your company. For example, if there's a bonus scheme connected to the work that the apprentice is doing that's applicable to employees of your company, there should be clarity which of these the apprenticeship is entitled to as well. The same goes, of course, for any financial contributions the education center might give to your company to support the apprenticeship. Finally, I also like to mention a contract that your company might have directly with the learner apprentice. If such a contract is used, you as a mentor are likely to be one of the signatories. Regardless, you should at least be aware what type of contract this is and know the relevant details. For example, in relation to salaries and additional bonuses the apprentice might be entitled to, their holiday allocation, and possible benefits related to healthcare, etc. It goes without saying that besides knowledge and understanding of the different regulating documents, you should also know about the specific documentation that are required in connection to the apprenticeship. So do check the agreement, contract, etc. to know what forms you are required to fill in as well.